Mm, lovely. Morning. My name is Stephen and I'm a metal detectorist, drone pilot, wombler, look it up, and uh, coin ringer. Coin ringing is something new that I've only just started doing um, at the back end of 2016. Um, and really it's an extension of my metal detecting where I find all sorts of coins. But the most common coins I think we probably find is this. And that's just a sample. Several kilos there of copper coins, which basically just get chucked into a scrap box. Um, I've given a few coins away to Conrad. He's also a coin artist, not a coin ringer. He makes wonderful things out of coins. I'll put a link to his um, channel and page and everything else in the video description. And it was probably Conrad that first inspired me because I wanted to make a new wedding ring. Mine had broken, it's um, 40 odd years old. Uh, I didn't want to buy another fragile one. I wanted to turn something that I'd found into a ring. Now, because I mix my metal detecting videos with my new coin ringing videos, um, I'm getting lots of questions about how do you do it? Can you show me how you do it? Well, I've done a quick video about the process from beginning to end. But people are saying to me, can you show me the stage by stage? So I thought, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll make some short videos on each stage. So I'm going to do that with this one. But the first thing I want you to know is this, wherever possible, I like to make coin rings from coins that I've dug up. Um, I'm not making rings from mint or uncirculated coins. I'm taking stuff that's been buried for decades, sometimes hundreds of years, and on some occasions, maybe longer than that. Now, give you an example of that. Here's a 1955 half crown, which a friend of mine dug up. And he sent it to me and said, can you make me a ring out of this? And it turned out really lovely. It's got that natural brownish patina on the coin because it's a cooper nickel. Uh, by the way, cooper nickel and anything with, I don't know, less than 80% silver in, for example, will leave a mark on your finger. Cooper nickels leave a big green mark on your finger. But uh, towards the end of this little series of videos, I'm going to show you how I use clear powder coating to make sure there's a barrier between the coin and the, uh, the skin so that it's avoided. Um, some people also, don't forget, are intolerant to certain metals on their fingers um, and touching their skin. So be aware about what you're doing before you get into this hobby yourself. But if you do want to get into the hobby, first thing you've got to do is start off with a couple of coins. And to make it easy, I'm just going to start with two pennies. This is Queen Elizabeth. Let me just get my glasses. And the date on this one is 1967. It's got some good relief on there. Fairly good condition coin, even though it's been dug up. And this one, similarly, it's George VI, the Queen's father. Again, fairly good relief on both these coins, even though they've been dug up. Now, they're either badly damaged because they've been hit by machinery, or maybe you clip it with your spade when you dig it up, or um, they come out really nice simply because they've been protected from the environment. They've been lost fairly early when the coin was relatively new and you dig it up and it's still in a very new condition. Sometimes they have a really nice green verdigris, a patina on the coins. These two haven't, but if they have, you have to ask yourself, do you really want to use those coins or just keep them? Because that patina takes so much, so long to acquire and it's a lovely colour. Verdigris on a copper coin is beautiful. Anyway, assuming you've chosen your two coins, the first thing you want to do, and what I'm going to show you in this video, is how to make a hole in them. And there are two ways to do that. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is to find the dead centre of the coin. There are several easy ways to do this, but probably the easiest way is to get a centre finder. It finds the centre of virtually anything. And all you, you do is you align it in that V, as you can see there. And there's a slot on this side. Now, you don't really want to draw a line on there and then turn it to 45 degrees because the margin of error is due to the thickness of the point. So the best way really is just to keep turning it. And if you keep turning it and make several lines, you'll see the end result leaves your little circle in the middle of the coin. Do you see that it's a 
just a circle in the middle. That is dead center. So I'll just do that with the other coin. Now then, here's the first punch method. Don't need this anymore. The first one is called the nine piece punch and die set. Um, there are variations of this. They are not self-centering. It's all done by eye. So you have to allow for human error with this one. Um, but it's a relatively cheap kit at about 30 to 40 pounds. You're unlikely to find them on the internet in the UK, which means getting them in from the US and the postage charges on this are horrendous, which doubles the price virtually. And the sizes range from one inch punch, one inch punch up to three quarter of an inch, and they're represented by the same number of holes there. And it's two plates which are held together by Allen keys at the side with a gap in the middle to put the coin. Now, when you put a coin in, the first thing that happens is it slips and falls straight through. And you don't really want any movement once you've got it centered, especially when you're going about just about to hit the uh, punch, because obviously you'll have problems. So one of the ways I like to overcome that is by using a piece of either leather or a business card or something like that. So let me first decide what size we're going to punch a hole in there. Um, I'll probably go with half an inch actually. Let me have a look at that. Yeah, I think I'll probably go with half an inch. So. It'll be that one. The half an inch goes all the way through when you strike it or you punch it. I'm not going to be hitting it with a hammer. I'm going to be using a press. Um, it really is a car jack, which will carry the rate of six tons, but you'll see how that works in a moment. So first of all, let's get this centered up. Now, another tip for you as well is um, don't touch the ink on there because you'll rub it off. Use a piece of sellotape over the ink so you can't rub it off. And then stick it to a piece of card which gives it that little bit more thickness and then you control the coin easy enough. And if I now center that up you can see you can centre it by eye using that circle. Now, it's still a bit slippy because it's not th very thick, so I'm just going to double the card up. That's a bit better, I can feel a bit of grip on there. I'm just going to turn this light on. That's it, just so I can see to centre it up. And you can see that I've done a good job there of getting that as close to centre as I can. However, it's moved a bit by tilting it up. I'll realign that. So first of all, we need to insert this the correct way round. It's got a sharp edge, which occasionally needs resharpening, and that edge is where you strike. So I'm going to put that into there, and then into the press. Right. Just centre that up underneath the press. I'm going to use the jack, which is above. I'll show, I'll show you the press in just a moment. Get that lined up. Bring that down. Now you see that wobbles in the hole slightly. That hole is fractionally, maybe a thou or something, too large. And that happens with wear, but sometimes it arrives like that too. So it wobbles in the hole. You need to make sure you get it absolute. See, it's wobbling as I put some pressure on, which is not good. So, in my opinion, the quality of these dies could be improved. Right. There we go. And now it's gone through. I keep a box down in here to collect all the centers that I've punched out and I'll think of a use for those later on. Anyway, 
time is to take a look at the punch. There's the hole through the copper coin. That was done by eye. I'm used to doing it, but I can still see that's still not quite dead center. I bet that's over a millimeter out. Now, the problem with that is once you fold that into a coin, then you'll find that one side is wider than the other on the band. So you'll have a wobbly ring. Um, the only way to correct that if it is out is to file it. So let's just check. Take what I think is the widest part. Nine point four three millimeters over on this side. Eight point eight five. That's not as bad as I thought, but it's not perfect. Let's try that again on the eight point. 8.75, go around to the other side, 9.8 foot, that's about a millimetre, verging on a millimetre there is out. Um, anything around half a millimetre is perfectly acceptable, you'll probably get away with it. The next method I'm going to show you is a bit more accurate, so let's go to that one. Right, that's the six tonne press, which I've just used to punch out the first one gave me a fairly good result nice round hole it is all to do with getting it right by eye this one is a pillar drill and there's still a bit of luck involved with this but there is another way to do it as well so uh, with the pillar drill so I'll mention that in just a second meanwhile let's get everything ready right here I have a clamp and I'm using a piece of sacrificial wood so it doesn't matter if we damage it or lose it or whatever the case may be it's just a piece of waste wood and I'm now going to put the coin on there making sure I don't touch that ink again in the middle to rub it off you can just see the little dot in the middle that's perfect press that down hard and then screw that up press it down screw that tight in the vise and that's held like that so now that's ready it just needs to be put on the drill plate and we're ready to use that three millimeter drill just to find the dead center so I'll just do that well you can see there that all I've really done is lowered the drill bit onto the coin made sure I've got it dead center on that tiny little dot um, put a little bit of pressure on without turning the machine on just to make a little impression, a little mark there to make sure it's dead on and that should be virtually millimetre perfect and there we have it so it is dead centre, that's absolutely perfect there is another way to make it even more accurate and that is really to bolt on this drill plate a, uh, a milling chuck, a jaw so you'll line it up once, dead centre, bolt it to the plate and every time you lower a coin, no matter what the difference in size is, the chuck actually will always hold it so it's dead centre drilling. So therefore you don't have to do any of this measuring, any of the lines drawing or whatever. And I've got one of those coming. So um, at the moment, that's the best way to get dead centre. Now we may need to make the correct size hole. So we'll do that now. What I'm going to do now is put in the chuck um, a step drill this is one drill to drill any hole you want up to the size of 20 millimeters you can get bigger ones as well half an inch the hole we did with a punch a few moments ago is approximately 12.7 millimeters this does 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 etc so we'll do a hole at 12 millimeters and if you need a fraction bigger you can just file it out and i'll show you how to do that so let's get this in Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There we go. Twelve millimeter hole. As I said, if you use the milling chuck which are bolt to the surface 
then there's no need for this gadget at all and you'll get 100% perfect every single time assuming you set it up correctly in the first place right that's two ways on how to put a hole dead center into a coin any coin the next thing I'll be showing you is how to anneal the coin heat it to its correct temperature for the type of metal that it is and the folding process that's just the first stage of the fold before we actually get to the shape of the ring so that'll be the next one and I'll join you then if you liked anything at all about the video please pick a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so I'll catch you later Filming and editing scenes Ready to watch on all your screens New videos every week So please subscribe Catch you later